Hello and welcome to my video series on solving the mystery of dualism, otherwise known as the hard problem of consciousness. Uh, the material that I cover in this short five-part video series is basically a summary of that which I cover in my book, Evolving Towards the Truth, A Guide for Searchers. You can find links to my book at my website, jeffkosmoski.com, or you can find the book directly at amazon.com. So, what is the mystery of dualism and why should it be of concern to us? Well, on a fundamental level, it's this acknowledgement that there's two distinct dichotomous realms of activity. There's the physical realm and the mental realm. The physical realm consists of everything from boulders to billiard balls to BBs to neurons to molecules and atoms. The mental realm consists basically of consciousness and the ingredients thereof primarily thoughts, ideas, sensations, and emotions. What makes it mysterious is that we suspect there's a correlation between the activity of the physical realm and the activity of the mental realm, but we don't have any good theories to explain why this might be the case. To make it a little more specific, we suspect there's a correlation between the activity of the neurons in our brain and the thoughts and ideas of our conscious minds However, we have no good theories or explanations of why this should be the case. Perhaps what makes it even more mysterious is that over the last several hundred years, mankind has made an incredible amount of progress in virtually every other area of scientific inquiry. However, despite all the progress we've made in the fields of medicine and chemistry and physics, and neurology and astronomy, we've made precious little progress against this uh, mystery of dualism. Why should it be the case that the activity of the neurons deep within our brains should also be accompanied by this phenomena of experience? These sensations of the smell of peppermint or the taste of coffee or the color yellow. This is the mystery of dualism and I believe I have a solution. You're probably wondering why it is that I can claim that I have a solution to the mystery of dualism or how my approach is different from all the other people who have tried in the past. I think a good way to view this mystery of dualism is to view it as a, a chasm, a chasm between these two realms. And I believe that most people view the problem or the solution of the problem being on the physical side. What I mean is that they tend to believe that we just haven't made the appropriate or correct discoveries in the realm of neurology or physics and that if we just look a little bit more deeply or continue with a little more perseverance that eventually someday we'll find this uh, mysterious process or this uh, mysterious um, activity that somehow converts physical activity into mental activity. I contend otherwise. I contend that what's prevented man from solving the mystery of dualism is not to be found on the physical side of the chasm but on the mental side. I believe that what's prevented man from making progress is a lack of understanding of how his mind works, uh, specifically how evolution has affected the way man's mind works, particularly with regards to problems like dualism. As I've uh, researched and wrestled with this mystery of dualism, I've discovered two epistemological curiosities or uh, hurdles that have hindered man's thinking. And as I said, these two epistemological hurdles are basically a consequence of evolution. In this series of videos, we're basically going to take a journey. We're going to retrace the steps that the evolved human mind typically takes as it tries to solve the mystery of dualism. And as we take this journey, we're going to encounter both of these epistemological hurdles. The intent then is going to be to convert each of these hurdles into the equivalent of a mid-span support for the bridge, the explanatory bridge, we're going to create across the chasm of dualism. Additionally, as we take this journey, we'll be looking for the uh, mystery stuff or the mystery process that uh, somehow converts uh, physical activity into mental activity. And as we do, uh, to keep ourselves focused, we're going to try to answer this uh, fairly specific question. The question we'll be trying to answer is, how does the neural activity occurring in my physical brain produce my metaphysical first-person experience of a single sensation? 
Or using the parlance of modern cognitive scientists, we'll ask, how does neural activity produce qualia? Qualia is the word philosophers use when they're referring to uh, sensations or sensory experiences. For example, the uh, color yellow, the taste of coffee, the smell of rubbing alcohol, or the feeling of cold or hot. Qualia is plural, quale is singular. So to summarize, in this uh, series of videos, we're going to build an explanatory bridge across the chasm of dualism. To do this, we're going to follow in the footsteps of the evolved human mind, and um, this will allow us to eventually encounter both of these epistemological hurdles that I mentioned. Or said differently, it will allow us to discover the way in which evolution has uh, negatively affected our ability to solve the mystery of dualism. Once we encounter each one of these uh, epistemological hurdles, we'll then uh, essentially convert them into a support column for our um, eventual explanatory bridge. This wraps up the uh, introductory video in the series. Uh, once again, the material I'll be covering in this series is uh, found um, in my book, Evolving Towards the Truth, A Guide for Searchers. And you can find links to my book at my website, jeffkosmoski.com or you can find the book uh, directly at Amazon.com. I'm Jeff Kosmoski. Thanks for watching.